Hey, Trevor Matthews here. I hope you're having a fantastic evening. I hope you had a great day. I had an awesome day. I learned a ton today. I was in a CO2 training group um, talking about warm ambient strategies, learning more about CO2, different climates around the world, around North America, and the best implementation of the different strategies, which was really cool. But tonight, I want to have a quick chat about um, smaller air conditioning compressors. We are getting really hot here in Ontario. We are 30 Celsius plus each day. So there's going to be tons and tons of calls. There was tons of calls on the weekend. There's going to be tons of calls this week because it's so warm. So I wanted to do a quick video on some of the compressor manuals, the application engineering bulletins, just to show um, some of the information you can find uh, to really help troubleshoot those compressors when you're out there. And if you can share this with some technicians, contractors, um, businesses, uh, so they can share it with their technicians, that would be fantastic. So as you can see on the screen here is the website climate.emerson.com. Uh, when you get there, you scroll down just a little bit and go to this uh, online product information. After it loads up, you go right here, publications and bulletins, learn more. Then U.S. Publications, if you're Latin America or Asia, you can select those. Application Engineering Bulletins, go to Compressors, which is for air conditioning. One I'm going to talk about uh, tonight is right here, the uh, one and a half, oh, sorry, the one to five ton ZP compressor. There are millions and millions and millions of these out in the field, so you'll see a lot of them. And as you can see, this is a 23-page manual on this spe these specific compressors. So there's, like I said, millions of these out there. And a lot of technicians don't even know that these exist. They work on equipment from different manufacturers that build residential units up to light commercial. And a lot of times these manuals do not come in. They do put a lot of the information in their manuals, but I have yet to see um, myself personally these manuals be put uh, be put in. So here's the table of contents. Uh, really should be reading the safety instructions. I, I know this is can it can be tedious, but if you read four or five times, you'll get to understand it because there, there's a lot of um, safety issues that could happen from electricity, to, from pressure, you know, from um, oils and stuff and refrigerants. So there's a lot of things and injury that could happen. So read that stuff. I'm going to get into the application consideration. So internal pressure reliefs, discharge temperature protection, heat pump protection, air conditioning unit protection, high pressure control. So there's a lot of stuff that I'm going to go through here. As I'm going to, here's the safety stuff. This stuff should be read at least a few times to get a better understanding of it. Um, the Z, uh, so this is a ZP K6. We had a K4, K5, K6. So we're always trying to increase the efficiency on these compressors. When we get into um, the discharge temperature protection, there's a TOD, temperature operating disc, inside the, the head of the compressor. So as that temperature starts to rise up, it gets over 275, what will happen? It'll open a, or snap a bimetal disc. And there's a passage of the gas that will shoot right down on the motor protector to trip off that compressor quicker because you're overheating. What I would recommend is adding a discharge line temperature protector as well. I think there maybe on this one here is around 260, so it cuts out before those internals even go off. Here's some of the uh, here's the model ZP10, so that would be 10,000 BTUs to 31,000 BTUs, the motor size, and it tells you the applications um, that they're used in. We'll go down heat pump protection. So right here, this is the big one: cutout setting, no lower than 20 psig. Very important to understand that. As well as when you're charging the system, you need a certain amount of charge in the system before you try to start up the compressor or it's going to overheat and trip off right away. Uh, discharge line thermoset, okay, yeah, right here. Discharge line thermoset exceeds 260 to trip off. Part numbers are, at the, I believe, on the last page. Air conditioning applications not set lower than 55 PSI. So if you're doing an air conditioning, so the residential unit is just strictly air conditioning, you got to set it not lower than 55 PSI. There's a little more information you can check out there. High pressure control, maximum cutout set, uh, setting to uh, 650 PSI or 45 bar. Understand you need those safety devices in there. 
there's shutdown devices. So there's a unitary shutdown device inside the top cap when you look inside there. And what this does is, as you can see here, it managed the flow in the top cap, so the discharge gas um, through the scrolls after shutdown. Because what will happen is when the compressor shuts down and you have, say, this shutdown device, something's jammed in it, it'll make a louder sound like, Wow! And it uh, doesn't mean the compressor has failed, but it's just going to make a, a louder noise, and that's what is to prevent that discharge uh, gas going back. It does have a disc type check valve, so right at the discharge port, there is a disc type. So when the compressor shuts off, that gas doesn't flow back through there. Certain compressors, you may have to have uh, an extra discharge check valve on the line. Motor uh, overload protection in there. Uh, so the internal brake, motor overload protection. So what happens if that TOD uh, gets over 275, it'll blow heat right on this motor protector. And uh, it opens the common on the single phase compressor the center of the Y. So it opens that common up. So you know, so if you go onto the common and that's open, it's going to say, oh, well, and if the compressor's internals are open, just make sure you might need to leave that compressor cool down. Don't say it's a failed compressor because that, it's going to say, oh, well, maybe because your overload's open. So important to check there. Envelope represents acceptable operating condition of 20K. We'll get down to the operating envelope in a minute here. So accumulators, so if you're doing a heat pump, recommended having accumulators in there. Uh, crankcase heaters, recommended here, and it gives you the examples of what you need to look at. And also down below, it's going to show you how to properly torque the crankcase heater on there, as well as how to put it on properly, where it's supposed to be positioned, because it has to be in a specific pot, a spot. Uh, and really what, you'll have a seam, a weld, and you should always have the screw over that so you don't crush the crankcase heater. So there's so much good information in here. Discharge mufflers, not really needed on scrolls, relatively low pulsation, but OEM needs to check that. Make sure they verify that, as well as for noise. Let's keep going down through here. There's lots of good stuff. Deep vacuum operation, understand the, when the pressure ratio it, uh, exceeds 10 to 1, those scroll sets are going to unload. So if you have a high pressure ratio or compression ratio, that compressor is going to unload. So you go put your gauges on there, and all of a sudden uh, they're equal. Compressors running but not pumping. Uh, well, that solenoid's uh, sorry, that floating seal is separated because the compression ratio is too high. It's going to run, and then it's going to overheat and trip off. Let's go down a little further. Brief power interruptions. This is a big one I, I learned only from reading this. If you have a brief power interruption, all of a sudden the scroll starts to slow down, and then if the power comes back in, it will start running backwards. What will happen, it will run until it trips on its internals, and then when it shuts down, it will start back up in its right direction. Uh, continuous floodback. That needs to be checked by the OEM, as well as you should always be checking floodback in the field. Lots of great information. Let me get down here a little further. These are uh, run tests. Great service procedures, step by step, checking that compressor. So before you condemn something or condemn a compressor, you should be walking through this uh, step by step. Proper voltage to unit. Determine if the internal overload has been opened or tripped. Check for the compressors wired correctly. Proper indoor, outdoor blower fans. Are they running properly? With the service gauges. Uh, connected to the suction discharge fitting, turn on the compressor. If the suction uh, pressure falls below normal levels, you can see maybe you're low on charge. And then it goes on. There's lots of great one. Look, compressor replacement. If you have a motor burn, and it explains right here how to do it properly. As well as start up. If you did have to replace, here's the step-by-step -step procedures on how to start it up. Right, Step-by-step -step right here. Do Allow suction pressure to drop below... 55 PSI, more than a few seconds may overheat the scroll and cause an early bearing damage. Look at that right there. In a few seconds. Here's the operation envelopes. Here's where the acceptable uh, superheat or unacceptable. This is where you would check the sump temperature of the compressor. Not many people do that, but you'll check underneath. You'd have to put a temperature probe. It's hard to get at and check what that sump temperature is. And it's really from the bottom you need to do it. And if you're in this area, it's unacceptable. Too much uh, oil dilution. Here is a um, wiring diagram for the solid state timer fuse. Pretty straightforward. Here's the seam well, like I talked about uh, earlier. And there's a specific location where these go. So if you're putting them on, look, it says 
between 0.2 and 1.2 inches. So important to check that stuff. How to properly braze the compressor in. And then how to scroll works. Uh, and then it talks about the suction funnel inside there. And it explains it a little bit more up top. Field application system on time, system off time. So it tells you a number of cycles. So this is the kind of idea of the way we would like to run it. For OEMs when designing, you know, tubing configuration, have a shock loop in there. Angle valve fa fastened to unit. Suction muffler not required. And here are refrigerant charge limits. So if you need an accumulator, here's the different charge limits. You may have to add an accumulator. And then here's all the parts. So that was a, you know, a qu not a really quick run through over 10 minutes here. But these are so important to be looking at and reading. And after you read a few, it will get easier and easier. My name is Trevor Matthews. Let's get a conversation going.